Hello, everyone. On today's podcast, we feature none other than the winner of the latest Malta Poker Festival Spring Edition, taking home a handsome 71K right here in sunny Malta. We welcome poker pro and poker coach Martin Lackefeld. Welcome, Martin. How are you doing? Thank you, Chris. I'm good. How are you? All good, all good. So how are you feeling? You banked a massive win lately. We watched it right with our very eyes covering the event and uh, it, it was uh, super fun to watch. How, how, how does it feel? It uh, feels really good. I'm still really excited about my win and uh, still really happy. Still, uh, yeah, a lot of friends coming to me, uh, still congratulating me. And uh, yeah, I feel super happy. Yeah. It's always month, good to uh, pick, this, pick yeah. the event, huh? Always good to pick an event. There was a super uh, key hand. I think it was with the nines versus aces, right? In the small blind. Yeah. And you shoved, and and he did you in on before as well when you had aces, and he had yeah. jacks. <laughs> <laughs> so that, was, that was a pretty sweet revenge. And then heads up as well, knocking him out. It was, uh, it was, yeah. You two tangoed quite a bit. Yeah, it was a really, uh, really good feeling when I hit the nine. And uh, it was actually a funny story because uh, when I was all in with the nines, uh -huh. uh, my girlfriend came up to me and the flop already came a nine. But my, I think my girlfriend didn't see it. And she was like, <laughs> a nine, nine, nine. And then the riffer was also a nine. So uh, well, we've got to bring her to every event. I mean, I think, I think I'll yeah. take her if that's, <laughs> if that's what she can do. Yeah, worth, worth it. Yeah. So what were, what were you do with the winnings? Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not uh, entirely sure what I will do with it. Uh, okay. Play some tournaments. More poker. Uh, yeah, more poker and uh, put something into Bitcoin. Ah, okay. Uh, Bitcoin okay. really low right now, so I have a good feeling about it. So a little bit Bitcoin, a little bit of bankroll, and I probably will buy a new bed here in my house. I've got a, like a 10-year-old bed, so okay. Uh, maybe some, get... maybe a new computer. Uh huh. Thinking yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. you've got to get the right tools. You're going to get one of those fancy beds, you know, like the cooling ones where you can uh, like set a perfect temperature. I, I really want one of those. That's, oh, uh, didn't know those exist yeah they you do can... <laughs> oh you can uh, manage the temperature on yeah, the yeah even on different sides i think you can manage the the temperature it's pretty cool i i'm gonna have to look into this because it's okay. so hot when i sleep but uh interesting yeah. maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> i have to look at it didn't uh, yeah all right so we're off the win but like let's go let's go back to the start i mean how, how did you even get into poker uh well when i was really really young like mm -hmm. i was 12 i think okay. and i watched uh, poker with my brother it was on tv here in the netherlands the master classics of poker mm -hmm. tournament series still running now the main event i was watching and then we were like yeah we should try this and then uh we tried yeah i don't know how to uh we tried it with marbles i think that's the, uh, <laughs> okay yeah yeah, it's yeah. like uh, the game the you play balls. as a kid yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we, we used that as chips and we had like playing cards that was my first game so it wasn't even with poker chips and then, uh, yeah, after like a couple of times we did it, we uh, we bought like uh, like the poker stuff you need, like uh, poker chips we bought yep. and a dealer button. And then we just started playing with, with friends mm -hmm. uh, for like no money. And then I tried some free rolls, tried that. And yeah, it wasn't really serious back then. Just started out with friends. And I think after like when I was 18, uh, I started taking it more serious. It became like a, like a part-time job for me. Mm -hmm. So all my friends like yeah work in a restaurant or something, and I uh, would play poker, uh, just the small stakes. Uh, and I think after like 2019, I won a lot, and after that, uh, I became pro. Okay, okay, I just I went mean, full time. So, like, how did you make the decision to go from you know okay, I'm just playing with friends to you know what I can actually make this my full time job? uh well i yeah with friends it always went really well for me I okay like, okay uh, well, that's a good start. one of the best players of, of my friends uh and some of them went went playing online and yeah we played online together with my brother and yeah it went very well so we won we won didn't want like this, this kind of uh money but uh mm -hmm. we won like a few thousand there a few hundred there uh, and then it was like hmm, interesting and i was really yeah i really a lot of passion for the game so i really like playing really like watching poker so yeah, it became very natural just to play poker and oh you can make money with this uh yeah why not <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think it takes to make a living out of poker uh i think a lot of dedication i mm -hmm. think you have to uh give some things up but also uh you have to study a lot i think uh mm -hmm. play a lot have like uh like a structure of what you're gonna play uh obviously be good enough 
like ha yeah have the passion uh, have the patience because yeah you can't there's months there's months where you don't make money so you have to get through that uh and be smart with your money i think like okay. I, I want this uh this price pool but uh yeah i think i can use that money uh for longer than a year mm -hmm. so i can if i have a bad streak now uh it won't be a problem i think uh, yeah money management is also really important and bankroll management uh game selection like yeah it's a it's a mix it's a it's a mix of a lot of things i think do you think you can train like anyone to do it or you, you know like some people are just never going to be able to do this yeah i don't i don't think anyone i think you have to get have some skills I think some math skills mm -hmm. like calculating pot odds if yeah if you have like like no math skills at all it's going to be hard unless mm -hmm. you you're really good at the other other things i think uh psychological you, yeah you can't tilt too soon i think if you tilt, if you lose one hand, or if you're like really impatient, I think it's hard. Uh, mm -hmm. And you have to really like poker, I think, because the other professionals or the other people uh, playing, like even not not even professionals, they take yeah, they put a lot of time in poker. So uh, yeah, you got to be those guys. So if you don't really enjoy poker and you think like right off the bat you want to make money, it's not gonna work, I think. Yeah, I think uh, it's absolutely. I think it's the key to success almost in anything, right? Like if you don't enjoy it or you don't love it, you're not going to get through the, the the tough times. Yeah. And speaking of tough times, like what 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 are some of the toughest times you've had in poker? What were the most difficult things? Uh, yeah, uh, good question. Uh, I think actually making like volume and uh, keeping confidence. Okay. Because um, there's like times where where I didn't make a lot of volume and there was like no no winnings in months uh and then you gotta keep then yeah the motivation became a little low you're gonna play less which you're yeah you're not gonna get that out of the downswing just uh, uh just keeping motivation i think just sometimes i had like yeah you're just playing online and you think you play well hmm, what else can i do i uh, just yeah just kind of clicking buttons and you're not really winning but also not really losing but just uh every time you come like 50th 50th in a tournament <laughs> yeah the motivation i think the motivation part was like pretty hard yeah sometimes and just keeping volume just like playing every sunday or uh, playing five times a week uh yeah instead of hanging out with friends because yeah they also want to hang out or just you're just getting lazy i think i think uh it's my hardest uh yeah hardest <laughs> thing to overcome especially in mtt right the variance is like absolutely crazy for a uh, multi-table tournament so yeah like in, in terms of keeping motivation like what advice would you have for people playing that format uh, i think just uh don't focus on the results too much mm -hmm. just focus on getting better just really try to get better just review your hands uh maybe have a study group of other players uh they can also get you can also get motivated by other players i mean if you're you have like a friend who's on the same skill level who is crushing it it can be like yeah i can be as good as this guy so i can also make it uh that can help um yeah i think just love for the game just try to get better and just review things and just try to think about what all the yeah what what are the things that people are doing wrong and try to exploit that and yeah having fun in that like i'm gonna beat these guys and not like oh i, I hope i make a run i hope i win the flips mm -hmm. now that's not to get the right <laughs> mindset yeah exactly i think a lot of players go through that journey right they attach winning and losing to success in poker, like especially with monetary value, but that is just never going to work if you if you focus on that when you can't control the outcome over the short term. So yeah, over the long term, like it really needs to be really needs to be about the decision making. So I, I, I completely agree. Um, okay, so we've covered downswings, you you got to stay motivated, uh, MTTs. What about like scheduling? How are you doing with schedules? I mean, how do you tell your friends say no, like, would you have a certain amount of games you play a month? Or how, how are you doing it? Yeah, I, I used to spread pretty bad in it. Like I, I okay, okay. now with uh, I used, but uh, this, this year, I uh, kind of took it differently. Just a few months ahead, like I make a schedule. Okay. So I'm I, like, like every Sunday I gotta play online unless mm -hmm. I'm playing live. So Sunday is just uh, off limits to, to that's the day. Yeah. To say yeah, I, Sunday evening I always play. Uh, then I try to schedule uh, some live tournaments. So uh, next month, uh, for example, I'm going to Barcelona. Oh nice. Uh, I already have scheduled now which tournaments I'm gonna play. Uh, and for the rest, yeah, like online series. If you have like uh, I think this Friday, if a good tournament on ACR, 
then just like oh that's a good tournament i yeah i looked about it two weeks ago mm -hmm. and just oh, that friday i'm gonna play uh from that time to that time uh so i try to yeah i try to schedule like a few days to play a week uh, and mm -hmm. then some live tournaments and i try to schedule uh, studying as well mm -hmm. uh, but i'm still working on it sometimes it just yeah you're like yeah i should study at four but then something come, came up and it, i could cancel it but exactly that's yeah. the thing right that's what people don't understand you know when you go to a regular job like you know if you're not there at nine you get fired right but when you when you yeah when you're playing poker it's like okay well I, I could i did set this time for myself to study and play but who's gonna tell me not to <laughs> yeah that's this kind of thing but yeah you will the problem with that is you will find it out later because maybe yeah. you get a downswing because you don't study enough yes um so you, yeah it's only yourself to blame on exactly. the end but yeah no no one's gonna tell you and yeah nothing's gonna happen if you don't if you don't show up but uh fair yeah. enough what what else do you do preparation wise do you do anything beforehand do you have like any exercise or food or breaks or study or like do you have any specific routine like uh, okay i know i'm gonna grind hard this day this is what i need to prepare yeah i'll try to uh sport just play okay. sports and maybe uh, fitness sometimes uh could also be in other sports doesn't really matter i think or just a long walk but uh try to get your uh body working mm. uh, because if you if you don't when i don't mm. when i don't sport and have a really long session i feel like uh physically i want to do something so you maybe get impatient on a river sport or something okay. i think if you yeah if you sport uh if you have sported uh in the afternoon in the evening you you won't get uh impatient mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i like to sport um and sometimes meditation Mm -hmm. but yeah less time last few months pretty lacking on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's an easy one to skip out i think like that's the one that you just think oh, i miss a session it's fine like you don't see the benefit from one session right and it's yeah. the same with exercise almost you're like you can skip one but i think exercise gives you like that immediate pump where you're just like okay i'm gonna make all the right decisions now you're just body super pumped after exercise so uh yeah, yeah. I, like, I like to do that one before as well yeah, um, especially Mm -hmm. especially on life uh, life tournaments i think yes it's maybe more important because sometimes you sit at the multi post poker festival like day two was like a 12 hour grind yeah and uh if you feel tired like physically it's okay you just sit on your chair but if yeah if you're like a busy guy then it's pretty hard i think to, to sit 12 hours <laughs> yeah it's it's true um okay let's see what else what are like the big the craziest things you've seen in poker or the most standout things the craziest things i think some home games okay like people i know pretty weird but uh it was like a 2-2 game and then some some guy just straddles to 140. it's those kind of things are pretty crazy people like don't really care for money some people uh -huh. i was really when i got into poker i really didn't know that i was like uh well because when i come into poker i played a lot of online when i was 18. so mm -hmm. you, you don't know really your opponents and then you play live for like 100 euro you think oh they're, they're really good they're all really serious and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah some guys true. just torch it it's like oh reebok period's still open uh let's go all in and like, yeah. oh, okay so that was yeah that was pretty shocking i think and some home games like, like the the amount of money that goes in with bad hands and uh yeah those kind of things <laughs> yeah the adjustment right from online to live is quite uh is quite interesting what, what, what do you think of like live reads uh yeah i i uh, pick up on them i think they're real mm -hmm. i think uh i don't think you need to be really good at live reads to be really good at live poker i mm -hmm. think if you can uh manage to disguise your own life tales then you're pretty good uh but there's a lot to be seen i think a lot of amateurs like they, they show a lot even even online players i went to like mm -hmm. et prague and i was noticing like some really good on online players not really uh, disguising their tales like not believing in them Mm -hmm. but uh yeah there's definitely things to be seen i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i do believe in it yeah i think it is for sure and especially in in the local tournaments that you know we were playing the mpf you know 500 buy-in and i was playing some of myself and you can definitely see a lot of a lot of live tales going on it's something i think uh people don't pay enough attention to for sure and a amateur players in those buy-ins are, are all over the place with with their tells so it's uh for sure very very good to look for uh and you have like a training site right so yes talk to, us, talk to us about that yes uh, we have training sites uh, called poker study it's mm -hmm. a dutch training site we make uh like content uh 
yeah in dutch mm-hmm. uh we have like three different uh, uh skill sets uh, mm-hmm. i don't know the good english words we have like a starters uh like a intermediate and like an expert so for all kind of uh skill levels uh, and we we do it with a monthly subscription Okay. People pay a monthly description and then they get like videos of me uh, or some, yeah, or some other poker coach uh, talking strategy. And, it, and it's purely for Dutch players or? Uh, yeah, Dutch speaking, Dutch speaking people because uh, we record it in Dutch. Uh, so, okay, like everyone yeah, is okay. welcome, but you you will yeah, probably yeah, won't understand it. If you see. <laughs> yeah, but also Belgian players who, uh, who speak Dutch. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, you need to understand Dutch or otherwise it's... Uh, yeah, it's not for you, actually. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. And uh, in terms of like uh, coaching, what have you learned through that experience? Uh, well, um, like really understanding a subject, I think. Because mm. if you need to explain it to someone with like a lower skill level, you really need to understand it, really in- need to understand mm. why something is happening. So I mean, like uh, why you're C betting on A7 uh, deuce or something. Mm-hmm. Why would you C bet a lot? And people are like, yeah, yeah, standard. Uh, but to other people like you need really need to to tell them and then uh yourself become a better player as well because mm-hmm. yeah because sometimes i just get a spot and i need to explain but i need to study it a few hours myself first and then yeah i see that spot uh, coming by online and then i really know because i really uh told other ones you know so it did it, it, that it makes me a better player as well I completely agree. I like, uh, I think that was when I played the best as well as when I was coaching, because like you said, you have to just know, and you have to be able to explain it or get other people to come to their own conclusions about it. And the only way you can do that is if you know it yourself. So, uh, yeah, completely, completely agree. Uh, so tell us in terms of studying, like how, how are you studying? Are you using programs? Are you just talking with friends or like, what, how do, what's your approach to study? Uh, both. I use a lot of programs, a lot okay, of solvers, okay. like, uh, also pre-flop like ICM ICER, but mm. uh, a lot of post-flop solvers like uh, GTO wizard, bio solver, uh, Odin. Yeah. Use them all actually. Uh-huh. Uh, and just, I like to study like spots, uh, like hands I played. So I get that to the solver, but, uh, that's not the, not the most, uh, not also the most useful spot um, to study because if you like get a solver, uh, it tells you what to do against a perfect player, but yeah, the players yeah. I play against not playing perfect. So uh, I like to see what the solver is doing and then what the, what I think the opponent is doing and mm-hmm. what my adjustments should be. So if you like, uh, sometimes a, a hand can be bad, uh, can be bad to bad uh, because someone will check raise a lot uh by a solver but if they're not doing it maybe it's good mm-hmm. so, so really uh try to make adjustments on the solver and not just copy it what would be some situations where like people are just playing nowhere near like the solver that you're exploiting uh, i think i think a lot of spots but uh to name an easy i think with with like 20 big blinds uh big mm-hmm. blind against the uh, race first in you have to check race on, on flop a lot mm-hmm. like mostly just 20 25 percent and yeah, I think people come close to like 10. Uh-huh. So that's, that's yeah, like a huge, huge difference on, on, on river spots because you have flop spot, a turn spot, which the solver plays perfectly and they, they, they don't have the hands the solver says, says on the river. Yeah. So I think on the river, because they would already bet flop or already bet turn or they wouldn't check it back. Uh, I think, yeah. So people check, check back or less, yeah, check back the flop and they, you see, oh, the solver has these kind of hands on the turn, but they don't uh yeah some really good things can happen uh strategy wise <laughs> and what's like your take on gto versus exploitative um question i think how i like to think about is like what's the gto solution here and then like uh what's yeah what exploits should i make like what's he what's he not playing gto like uh what are his mistakes compared to gto and then i, I adjust as well because I think if you play pure G- GTO, you're like missing out yeah, on a lot absolutely. of edge, I think. Because, yeah, it's like uh, when you know a guy's really tight, then from GTO perspective, you, you still need to call the same as against a maniac. That's pretty wrong. <laughs> so uh, I think you should, a good understanding of GTO is important, but you don't re- need to follow it all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that was the approach that I used to use as well. Like just know 
kind of what it wants to do and then see how your opponent is is not <laughs> playing that way yeah in almost every every spot i think especially in mtt right i think that's the biggest gap between uh gto probably and actual play i think in the cash games and some of the other games are a bit more closer to it but i think in mtt people are still quite far off yeah i think it's also smart because uh, in cash game you play a lot against the same opponents i think mm. so if you went like out of your way on the exploit if you're going to get exploited yourself mm -hmm. and also you have like spinning goes with spinning goes also i think a lot of the same opponents mm -hmm. so you can go like really out of line and in tournaments like a lot of spots like even deep like on that final table on the mpf like a lot yeah. of players i will never play again or like in a few years when when strategies have changed yeah so i don't really uh care about being balanced just exactly care about that hand itself and of course you need a kind of a balancing strategy if you like raise every hand they're gonna adjust <laughs> <laughs> but uh i think you can be quite exploitable yeah, yeah. I, I i completely agree especially when you're never playing the same opponents it's uh it's completely true and we had, we had an interesting spot as well in the in the mpf where you know there was talk of a deal or whatever what's your approach to deal making yeah, I've, uh, I've never made a deal, actually. I don't, uh, I think deals, deals are okay. You can make deals. Uh, but I think there's always one who has an edge. And the one with the edge shouldn't make a deal. So a deal is never a win, 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 I think. Uh, unless you really uh, will cut the variance and that's the win. Mm -hmm. I think then it's okay. If you think, if you think you have the same skill as the other one, you can make a deal. Because mm -hmm. the variance will get lower. But if you think you're better, then I don't think you should, or you should ask more. Yeah. But then the other guys like, why you ask more? I don't want to lose money. So that's kind of my problem. When I think I'm better, then I won't make a deal. And then I want more. And the other guy will be like, yeah, why? I don't want to give you more. <laughs> and then you just play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's not really a good thing to go into a heads up match and basically admitting that you're like worse than the other person, right? So. <laughs> I guess yeah. you have I guess you have to just like well okay no then we'll take your chances with the luck but uh like you said what about if like you know the prize money was just you know like the world series main event final table you know and then you're talking difference of millions are you gonna are you gonna look at maybe a bit more possibility of deal then even if it's someone who's not super good yeah I think it would look more but still still I think you <laughs> like before you you played the tournament you didn't have that money yeah, and if you, I mean, if like the second place get five million and the first place left like eight million, you, I will still, yeah, I still came in a tournament not a millionaire, and now I have five million. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's play for the other three. That's kind of my mindset, but because <laughs> already, yeah, it's different when I just when someone would ask me now because the MPF heads up was like for twenty eight k. Yeah, but if you would come it's to me now, difference. yeah, it's quite a difference in the, in the payout. Yeah, but I was thinking if he would go to me now, like, let's play heads up, we both lay in 14k, I don't know if I would say yes. So mm. uh, when you get heads up, would you really want to play for 3 million? Like, maybe I would make a deal, yeah. Because <laughs> if you think about it, yes, yeah, would you, would you want to play a buy in of 1.5 million against someone heads up? Yeah, probably not. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. so it's different when you sit there and you feel, like, confident and you want to, you're like, yeah, I'm going to beat this guy. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough um let's see what what else do we have uh what what are you what are your plans like future plans uh just uh like for this year's play a lot of live poker uh, okay. also online but i like to like get like one two trips in a, a month so okay, okay. Uh, like i just came back from uh check from rosvedov like mm -hmm. after malta and now i now my next trip is in june like third on june of fourth of june i'm going to barcelona to play the 3k main event and maybe some side events but i'm not sure about that yet because mm -hmm. maybe some vacation there is nice as well uh in barcelona um i think on the end of the year i want to play the uh, world series poker europe main event okay like, I, don't, I don't play a lot of high binds but that's uh that's 10k uh with a lot of uh people satellite satelliting in it okay so uh it's not like uh, everyone buys in yeah softer field yeah uh, and just yeah just play live poker till like 5k 10k buy-in uh just like the 500s the 1ks 2ks mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes 5 or 10k mm -hmm. uh and just play like s online like the 100 dollars 200 300 like kind of dead buy-ins and yeah just play a lot actually this year and next year and yeah i'll see where it goes 
like how are you game selecting online are you like playing loads of different uh, sites and trying to select like the softest games or small fields for variants or like how, how do you go about putting a poker schedule uh yeah well not a lot of sites because in the netherlands we can't yeah. uh there's some some things change we can't go on poker stars we can't go it's on so party crazy, man. yeah <laughs> so, so it's just i actually just gg and some other poker apps uh sometimes yeah. i look at it mm -hmm. um so not a lot of uh yeah possibilities uh, but uh, yeah game select like the best uh, my highest binds are also on the best games like i pick out freeze outs freeze outs are mostly the softest because the yeah the really good pros they will always re-entry and when they can't uh, yeah the field gets softer of course mm. um yes the high guarantees are mostly softer so i look at that because uh maybe a 530 on gg on sunday has like a 1.5 million guarantee mm. it's going to be way softer than uh let's say Thursday night with a 100k guarantee because yep. the same pros will still be in it this, this, the best players will still be in it and yeah if you if you have like 1500 men the the five good players you probably won't see them uh, so like the high binds are also the binds where the most money can be won the highest guarantees mm -hmm. uh and the low binds yeah also I was, yeah I play a lot of tournaments with like big fields I think those are the softest yeah, uh, softest. Yeah, softest highest variance, right? Also, yeah, also the highest variance. Variance, but uh, to counter that, I have someone who like buys action on me with like a little bit of markup. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that suppresses the variance a lot. Mm -hmm. So so like that, and uh, yeah, I think Sunday is also the softest. So I, I like to always play on Sunday. That's yeah, <laughs> everyone loves the, yeah, the Sunday, and, right? And the poker series are also. Uh, when there are more players online, I think also a little bit softer when, than when there's no series. Mm -hmm. So now, now you've like the GG online series, I think you've scoop, mm -hmm. you can play scoop. That's yeah, pretty nice time to play. So I think the coming weeks uh, will also play a lot of online. Mm -hmm. And what changes have you seen like in poker over, over your time? Um, I think everyone just got a lot better, just got a lot better. When I started playing, like still the Americans could play online. I think it was a lot softer back then. But then, yeah, I was also a lot worse that then. Every, everyone was like pretty bad. If you look at it now, everyone's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, 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 with the knowledge of then, they couldn't know. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a lot of changes. I saw like um, when I used to start playing, like everyone's 3Xing uh, pre flop. I used to do it as well. And then I, I remember when I had like a break of two, two and a half years, I didn't really play. And my brother play, uh, still played. He was like, yeah. 3x is not a thing anymore so i would still 3x and everyone like 2.5 2.2 right now i think uh, what a fish i was <laughs> but yeah <laughs> there was the standard so uh like, like opening races uh i think the big blind gets defended a lot more uh mm, yeah, yeah, yeah people start three fun. betting more uh, like check races on flops um also like people used to only bet equity on the turn so only when like a fl i used to when you teach someone it's like yeah you got to you gotta they know when they have value they should bet but they some people just never bluff and then you teach them like yeah when you have equity uh, you need to bluff and now people bluff as well without equity so uh i think that's that's changed uh solvers came out i think that's changed a lot especially on the higher stakes yeah. uh, and people on the lower stakes like they copy it a bit mm -hmm. so it's and i think over bets also thing i didn't think i saw a lot of over bets like five years ago and people like over bet a lot now uh especially on the higher stakes uh also tiny bets i think bet sizing also changed a lot people would like only bet one third to like two thirds and now you have like 10 percent bets you have like two times pot bets uh, i think yeah i think people became a lot more aggressive so yeah people just became better i think in poker <laughs> yeah so. those the solvers changed everything man like as soon as uh it solved a bunch of things people just start doing it and everyone just starts copying it right yeah <laughs> now you have to be a little more creative like uh what the people who are copying and doing wrong because sometimes they copy it badly they copy yeah, yeah. maybe the the flop tactic but no don't know what to do on the turn yeah so uh but people become better but that, i think that's with uh that's true with every sport yeah, I was, I was always always thinking myself, like maybe just stick in some different, like maybe suboptimal bet sizings, but because you put your opponent in a game part of the game tree where they just don't know the right response, maybe it actually becomes very optimal compared to like the actual optimal bet sizing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that's a pretty good thing. People will know. 
They won't know what like, to do. I mean, yeah, on some boards, they know exactly what to do yeah. against the one third bet. Exactly. But if you go like, I mean, 20% or 50%, they're like, oh, oh, what now? Yeah. So <laughs> I, th I think it'll be uh, unconventional. You also see it on the highest stake. I think, uh, I don't know how GTO at most plays, but he plays like, he makes a tree like really polarized and I think it's mm. pretty hard to play against it. Like you see, he's, he's always putting people in the river for like pot. He goes like pot, pot, pot. And yeah, if people haven't solved it, it's pretty hard to play against. Because <laughs> you have to put them in your whole stack. And like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's never fun getting being put to the put to the test. Um, so okay, let's just revert back to the beginning again. Like you said you were gonna play poker. Like, what what did your parents think? Because this is not this is not like a normal thing to be, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna just, just play poker, that's it for living now. Yeah, good question. Uh they were all always kind of accept, accept acceptable because <laughs> at, at a young age, like 18, 19, uh, already won quite some money okay uh, but they were also like it's not a job kind of like yeah, yeah I had you that. should, right. you should go to school and just get a job <laughs> then um there was also like finish your school was also really important okay like even after um uh, yeah i don't know what to call it in the netherlands uh it's called mbo in the, in the netherlands but uh it's like medium school or something uh -huh. i don't know what like from 17 to 21 i went to that school and uh i could go one higher after that um uh, and but i kind of wanted to play poker but they were like yeah just first school like go go to the other school and uh be sure to, yeah if poker doesn't work out you have to good, have a good career and there was they were also yeah kind of pushy on school like uh -huh. if if school went well i could play poker all day they didn't they didn't really care so that was yeah. pretty nice as long as i went cool with uh with good with my money like good bank management yeah. but i yeah i always had that my brother's really good in it and uh i was being pretty responsible with my money so never went i never really went broke hmm. um so they were pretty okay with it as long as i uh, got good grades in school <laughs> like like that <laughs> and uh it was also pretty hard because when i was 24 i think i al almost finished school and then i won a lot of money in poker and i was like almost only pay poker and my school was like pretty left behind i got yeah. uh yeah i think yeah it was I don't know the English uh, words for it, but uh, it's supposed to cost four years, but it cost five years. It's just <laughs> poker, like they were like, yeah, yeah, just finish your school and then uh, it's your choice. So I finished uh, social work on the high high school, and then after that I went full poker, and they're pretty okay with it now, because yeah, I got my uh, yeah, I finished my school, and now I, I can all, always get a job if if poker doesn't work out. So. Uh, I think right now they're pretty cool with it, but it wasn't always easy. But I think a lot of parents would be would be way harder, and they were always pretty chill about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. Okay, let's uh, let's go to a rapid fire now. We'll do a rapid fire round. Are you okay. ready? Yes. Okay. Favorite poker player. Favorite poker player. Fivey. Live or online? Live. What do you love the most about poker? Uh, bluffing. <laughs> what are you best at in poker? Uh, maybe the same. Bluffing. I don't okay. know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure about. Yeah. That's true. Well, what, what, sure. What, are you, what are you worst at? Worst at. Um, good question. Hmm. I think exploiting opponents. Exploiting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was rapid, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Best thing about being a poker player? Best thing. Uh, freedom. Worst thing? Uh, swings. No if, swings. Swings. If poker disappeared tomorrow, what would you do? Uh, well, uh, I think I would I would trade maybe on the stock market or something. Just find something online to uh, make money with or go back to a job. But I, if it's tomorrow, then probably cry first but uh, <laughs> okay. maybe some crypto things i think <laughs> best book you've read lately uh, best book um, uh, the bitcoin standard mm, okay favorite movie favorite movie um, mm, wolf of wall street favorite place in the world uh, favorite place in the world Don't know. Don't know. Um, I 
Maybe my home, Netherlands. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> so patriotic. Tell us something most people don't know about you. Uh, I think I already told it uh, like during the podcast, but ah, okay. uh, that, that I studied uh, social work. Uh -huh. uh, I think a lot of poker players don't know that they, they think I, yeah, I studied something like economics or something because uh -huh. yeah, I use, I'm pretty good with numbers and then, uh, social work is just talking with people. Uh -huh. So I think that's, uh, that's the thing that a lot of poker players don't, uh, don't know about me. Okay. I'm interested in that one now. Why, why, why did you choose that one? Uh, because after, uh, like the previous school, I studied something like economics, mm -hmm. like uh, accounting. Um, but I didn't really like sitting in an office like, uh, eight hours a day. And I really like to talk with people. So okay. that's, that's kind of why I like coaching as well. I really like to help people, talk with people. Uh, yeah, that, that gets my energy uh, flowing. And uh, like sitting in a computer all day, I don't really like it. That's why I also don't play only online. That's okay. why I really like live poker as well. I like uh, the social aspect of it. And like to help people. So it was like a perfect match. Okay, okay. That's a good one. Cool. All right. Proudest life moment. Proudest life moment. Um, I think like the MPF come close. I think like some. Uh, I think some poker accomplishment. Like I won the W Coop in 2019 for 100k. Okay. Yeah, that comes close. I think this this victory also uh, maybe uh, the proudest. Like proudest of myself. Like I've put a lot of work in uh, last couple of months, and then uh, when you win it and play well, uh, yeah, I felt really proud. Awesome, oh, wow. awesome stuff. Well, tell tell people where they can find you, Martin. Uh, like on social media, it's like uh, on on Insta, it's Martin Lakerfeld. Uh, yeah, maybe I should spell it out. But if you Google <laughs> Lakerfeld, I think you will see it. Uh, Martin Lakerfeld on Insta, Instagram. You can yeah contact me on Facebook, Martin Lakerfeld. Uh, yeah, those are two things I think. And Poker Study, PokerStudy.nl. If you want to watch. Uh, so I'll also be seen. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we'll put all the links in the description. Don't worry. Well, thank you Good. so much, Martin. It was a pleasure to speak to you and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. You too. It was a pleasure. All right, guys. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and we'll see you all soon. Take care, everyone.